Good afternoon, welcome to the Dingoes. Um, sorry, I'm a bit late. I left my keys up the top. I had to go and borrow someone else's. Um, as you can see in here, we've got the four animals. Uh, one nice little pack. Uh, it consists of the alpha male, which is this big woolly chap at the back here. And the alpha female, which is this female here. And the other two are their three-year-old offspring, which are also a male and a female. Um, so you notice that the males are slightly larger than the females, but the alpha female still has the last say, so there's no great surprises there, really. Um, we also have an old boy who's next door. Um, he's from the previous pack to this one, that's why he's, he's separate. Um, dingoes are quite territorial animals, and um, he's also quite old. He's about 13 and a half years old, so he's doing okay for an old fella. Um, so we've sort of become his pack, so we try to spend as much time as we can with him, and. He goes for walks in the park and that sort of stuff as well. So um, he may poke his head around the corner there. He does on occasion. Um, so keep your eye out for him. Um, dingoes have been in Australia for between about five and eight thousand years. Uh, they were brought over to Australia from Southeast Asia by seafaring people. Um, since they've been here, they've done a pretty good job of spreading out over most of the mainland continent. Um, the spread of dingoes was actually um, assisted by the arrival of European settlers who decided to introduce rabbits, which is an ideal source of food, um, and also provided some permanent water through some of the more arid regions of the country. Um, dingoes are pretty amazingly intelligent animals. Um, they're very athletic and um, they're very good at what they do. Um, once I of this one sign of their adaptability is their pack size will depend will vary depending on what is their main source of food. So if they're in a region where their main prey is small stuff like rats or rabbits, uh, they'll generally be a pretty solitary sort of animal. Um, if they're in an area where their main prey is large stuff such as kangaroos, they can be in packs of up to 20. But um, packs of that number are, are also becoming incredibly rare, mainly due to human restrictions placed within the land. Um, Dingoes are viewed differently. Um, every state has their own legislation regarding dingoes. Um, so in, in the Northern Territory, in ACT and in Victoria, they're protected by law. In all other states, they're still um, pretty much classed as vermin and there's still quite heavy controls in place in regards to dingoes, where they can be and where they can't be and, and uh, basically everything about them. Um, dingoes are the reason there was a fence put across almost a quarter of the country, um, called the dingo or the dog fence, depending where you are. Um, it stretches from here in South Australia in the Great Australia Bight through to just north of the New South Wales Queensland border. <laughs> right um, and yeah, 5,320 kilometres, it's the longest continuous fence in the world. So there you go, that's a bit of handy information for you. Um, so this was basically erected to keep dingoes out of grazing country, which it has for the most part been successful. There certainly are wild dogs south of the fence, but um, whether they're dingoes or not, the only way you can truly tell is by doing a DNA test. Um, there certainly are a lot of wild dogs around. Um, not all of them are dingoes. <laughs> are they? Um, interestingly, where dingoes do occur in sheep country, um, sheep tends only make up around about 2% of their diet. And this is mainly because sheep is quite a fatty meat. Uh, when you compare it to kangaroo or rabbit, which is their two sort of main sources of food in the wild. Uh, both very lean meat, so they tend to prefer leaner meat. Um, that's not to say that dingoes won't kill and eat sheep, because they definitely will. Um, and that's another tricky problem. Um, we've domesticated sheep to make them easier for us to work with, and we also work them with dogs. Uh, it makes them quite easy prey for dingoes. Um, so yeah, it's one of those tricky situations, you know, no one's right and no one's wrong. Um, landowners just trying to make a living and sell are dingoes, so, you know, it's one of those hard, hard situations that doesn't have any decent answer. Um, you've probably noticed young Kimber, who's over there, she's the most subordinate animal in this pack. Um, the way a dingo pack pretty much works, they're out and they're the bosses, they're at the top. Um, everyone else within the pack is subordinate to them. So the subordinates will have kind of the hierarchy uh, amongst themselves as to who's who's who. Um, 
and you probably figured out this big fella here is slightly more dominant than her. Um, so pretty much the way, the way they would work, if they're a hunting pack, they'd all work together and take down their prey. Um, the alpha pair will then eat first, and they'll eat as much as they want and pick out all the good bits. Uh, when they're done, they'll move out, and then the rest of the pack will move in, depending on what their sort of standing is within the, the hierarchy of the pack. So speaking of food, um, today they're having a bit of a, a bit of a lean feed actually. Um, they're getting a bit of kangaroo and a bit of kangaroo tail. Um, we try to give them as much variety as we can. Probably the majority of the meat that we do put out here would be kangaroo. Um, and wherever possible, we'll leave fur on, um, we'll leave feathers on. You can see they've had chicken recently. Um, and we'll leave, leave it just as natural as we can if we've got a choice. Dingoes are quite wary animals by nature. Um, so generally speaking, they're not going to, if you're in the middle of the bush, they're not going to come barging up to you and try and rip your jugular out. Um, in most cases, uh, wild dingoes will be heading in the opposite direction. Um, obviously in some areas um, where there's a lot of campers, uh, some people think it's a good idea to feed wild dingoes and then they'll lose their fear of humans and then you do have potential for a problem there. Um, dingoes will enter camp, they'll usually do it in a very cautious manner. Um, that's probably about it for me today. Um, my voice is starting to go a bit funny, so I'm going to pick while I'm ahead. Um, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> 